Hi folks, it's me Robert J. E. Simpson again and thank you very much for tuning in to this video blog uh, as we go through the COVID crisis, which is just getting more and more bizarre by the day. Uh, today is the 23rd of March 2020. Uh, this is blog post, I think, number five. And um, it's all getting a little bit uh, sci-fi at the moment, isn't it? Um, this evening, Boris Johnson has announced the strictest restrictions I think in the UK, uh, possibly ever, certainly in peacetime, uh, we are now no longer supposed to basically do anything outside the confines of our own homes. Uh, we are allowed to go to the shops for essential supplies. We're allowed to take a little bit of exercise outside as long as we keep the safe and appropriate distances away from other people. And in addition to that, we are allowed to go outside, but only to have meetings of one other person, unless they are members of our family. It's all very, very strange. Um, I've basically been on a diet this week of apocalyptic films, uh, partly because I, I'm supposed to be having an event on the 6th of April, which we're doing with Accidental Theatre. Uh, that's our How to Survive the Outbreak, according to the movies. Although that is even changing <laughs> in the last few hours because the restrictions have changed, um, because everyone's self-isolation is changing as well. But th that, that's something I'll talk about in another post and probably over on the Cinepunked pages. Um, but I've basically spent the last few days devouring apocalyptic films and um, I spent the other day watching all three versions of I Am Legend, the Richard Matheson story um, classic uh, 1954 science fiction novel um, which presents a post-apocalyptic world where everyone has been struck down by a virus uh, Robert Neville is the only man left standing uh, and everyone else has been affected by a, a sort of vampire plague uh, and are dead set on killing him. Uh, now that was first pitched to Hammer Films, of all things, in 1957. And at the time, problems with the censors meant that the film did in fact uh, not get completed. Uh, it was instead sold off to Robert Lippert, and Robert Lippert had been uh, in co-productions with Hammer on a number of films throughout the 1950s. Um, and, and Hammer basically washed their hands of it. That didn't actually make its way to the silver screen until 1964 uh, when Lippert produced the film starring Vincent Price, shot in Italy. Um, and for me, it's perhaps one of the best. Uh, in fact, I think it's the best adaptation. Uh, Price, who has a reputation at times for being somewhat hammy, is absolutely captivating in it. And that film is so eerie and beautifully lit. Um, the sequences of, of Price are wandering through the streets with the corpses lying around every desolate landscape. It's Italy pretending to be Los Angeles, but it's still an absolutely fantastic film. Um, it was then adapted just seven years later as The Omega Man with Charlton Heston. Um, it's actually filmed in LA and I have to say, rewatching that again, it's rather fun. Um, there's a bit of black exploitation element to it. The opening section is particularly strong. Um, with Heston wandering his way through the streets of LA and talking to himself. And those two films together, uh, you can see the influence of both on the Will Smith 2007 adaptation, which I watched the other night in its alternate ending cut for the first time, um, which is a slightly more uplifting ending. If you've seen any of the versions before, you know the story. Uh, Neville's outcome isn't necessarily that positive. It's quite a bleak outlook on, on terms of what's way a virus may indeed um, uh, sort of affect us. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm very very fond of the story itself. I've got the the uh, the novel in several adaptations. I've also got it in script form. Um, it came out a few years ago. There was this this version here, Visions Deferred, which uh, three unfilmed Richard Matheson scripts, and then uh, haha, I also have this, uh, my Bloodlines, my uh, limited edition signed version, um, which I got uh, a number of years ago. Absolutely gorgeous, big heavy book. Um, there you go. Richard Matheson's signature on the inside as well, but this contains the original script as was sent to Hammer Films in 1957, not the version that eventually made its way to the silver screen. Um, I worked for Hammer Films for a number of years as sort of a webmaster and archivist, and I still recall the day that uh, I ended up in the archive and um, going through some of the unproduced screenplays that we still had in storage at the time, coming across the script for I Am Legend. Um, I, I, I knew it in theory existed, a lot of the stuff that went to that company over the years has gone goodness knows where, but I remember spotting that and, and being very, very excited indeed uh, and sending a text off to um, one of my, my bosses up there at the time and just telling him, Look, we've got this, we've actually got this. I'm very, very excited. Um, for those of you who are interested in the Hammerscript archive, these days it is housed um, within uh, De Montfort. 
in the cath uh, cath center at De Montfort University. Um, although to be fair, I'm not sure exactly what material they have these days. Um, I was oversaw the first batch of stuff that got sent to them. Don't know what was followed up subsequently. I know some of Jimmy Sangster's scripts and and some other stuff is is there now. Um, but yeah, it's an absolutely uh, fantastic story. I do love it, and it's well worth having a look at in whichever version you can. For me. Check out the Vincent Price version. If you haven't seen it before, it's very, very creepy, very, very eerie. And right now, wandering around the streets of this city, uh, I'm, I'm living not too far away from Belfast. I was out this evening. It was very, very quiet, very, very strange. You get the odd person wandering around and exploring the place with their, with their friends and family. I met up with a friend, single friend, trying to keep our distance, the appropriate uh, six feet or so away from each other. Had a nutter, a cup of tea, uh, uh, and basically looked at some stuff and wandered around, a bit of exercise. Uh, but it's very strange watching other people sort of deliberately careening themselves around from you. Uh, and perhaps the strangest was the lady who I saw, uh, she was walking past us, we were sitting down having our, our coffee and our wee chat. Um, and I can hear her shouting to her family, two metres apart, two metres apart. And as they walk past us, us being completely inert and sitting still, um, she must have been two feet away from us. I thought, well, love, either you're going to follow the rules and lead by example, or you're just going to disregard it completely and do your own thing. And she was essentially just doing her own thing. Hopefully people are out there documenting this stuff, because it strikes me that this is the bizarrest point that we have ever had within the 20th century. We are essentially now living in a science fiction novel. The um, restrictions that are being placed on us are so extreme and so weird. I never thought I would live to see a day where we were told to leave our jobs uh, and apparently we're going to be looked after by the government, although that remains to be seen. Um, but to go off and live these lives as hermits and not just individuals, but actually the entire nation and not just the entire nation, but the whole continent, the entire world. Uh, very, very strange days indeed. Um, yeah, so I am basically uh, sitting watching all these sort of post-apocalyptic films, a lot of them have been zombie themed and I'm finding it very very hard at times to differentiate between reality and the fiction. I go from from sort of seeing our streets and our spaces, uh, hearing these stories and then going into them. The other night I watched both versions of Dawn of the Dead as well and, and after seeing the photographs of the Tesco's around the UK, after seeing the video footage of that and people just sort of spilling in and out of them, um, there is this sense that it felt very much like the dawn of the dead why are people doing this it's because this is what they remember it's not necessarily that they need to go and buy all this stuff uh, in abundance but it's just the stuff that they remember from the f from their lives before and that's exactly the sort of satire that that romero's dawn of the dead picks up on it's it's that sort of habit i guess um weirdly enough i ended up tonight uh, back at a place that i'm occasionally employed by standing outside the doors looking in there's nothing else going on why am i here well i guess part of it is just that habit that we get into um we live in strange times indeed and i'm sure this is a thought process that's going to follow through some more of these vlogs over the coming weeks and my gosh probably months anyway that's me for now um i'll be back with you i'm sure tomorrow bound to have something else to think about by then um as per usual if you like any of this stuff you want to follow me on social media you'll find me at robert j e simpson on both uh facebook and instagram you'll find me on twitter as avalard a v a l a r d and if you're interested in the film stuff i do check us out at cinepunked.com and our associated social media profiles um i'm open to suggestions for what you want to see on these little vlogs so if you've got ideas for things you want me to talk about um things that you want to engage about uh if there's stuff you want see me do let me know and i'll try and do them as best as possible um so hit me up in the next couple of weeks and i'll see you again soon